coronavirus has been spreading over the last few weeks and is taking a deadly form. Till now, 2,062 cases has been confirmed inside China and 56 were dead out of them. Even outside China, there are 54 confirmed cases in Canada, Australia and France. At this moment, we should ask that how deadly this virus is. Okay, let us first compare this virus with some other viral outbreaks such as avian flu, Ebola, SARS and MERS. All of these numbers shows percent mortality. In case of Ebola or avian flu, there was quite a lot of mortality. But till now, the ENCO 2019, the coronavirus of novel strain, has only killed 4% of the infected persons. That means how deadly it is. It does not look so deadly. Should we worry? At this point of time, we should ask that if there any treatment, is there any vaccine, or does our body fight back against the virus? What is the situation? It turns out the World Health Organization has pointed out the risk factor could be very high. Even though the mortality reported so far is low and only 4%, but the risk factor is high because many of the cases, there are individuals who are infected but not yet dead. So the mortality might increase. So, but it's also not true that if you're infected by this virus, you would always die because our immune system would try to protect our body from this kind of virus attack, right? But the biggest problem is, let's say you are an infected person and you sneeze or cough in public and later on, some other people go from the same route. These viruses are actually present in the aerosols. And when you breathe that aerosol, it enters your lung and it can infect you. So this is the big problem. That means if you are infected knowingly or unknowingly, if you do sneezing, coughing, etc. in public, there are 90% chance that the, some of the people in the public would be affected by this virus. So it can spread dramatically as it is airborne. Now, the biggest problem is there are many people who are infected but not showing any kind of symptoms. It is deadly because if you are not showing any symptom, you might not report your case to the hospital. And that's how the government might not know about it. But the people who are infected might be way more than estimated. So this is the big problem. And also the, in, when, it, when the mort mortality is concerned, at this particular point of time, the virus might not be able to kill all of the people who are infected. But in future, the number may vary. That is why this virus is spotted out to be a high-risk virus. Now, you should wear specific mask but not the mask you wear for to avoid the pollutions these masks would only protect you some from some big particle and there is a particle cut off so these are not the recommended mask they are the recommended mask is n95 viral protection mask which would prevent a virus to go out or new virus or aerosol driven virus to come in and it would protect yourself. But N95 mask has another problem. With N95 mask, the gaseous exchange is very low and limited. So it can be a problem for people having breathing problem already. So it is only way by which you can prevent yourself from getting contamination from the air. Now let's look at how coronavirus affect our lungs. Inside our lung, there are small sacs. These are known as alveoli. These are air-filled sacs. And outside of that, there is a contact of blood vessels. Now, these blood vessels are actually getting the oxygen which we breathe in in our lungs. And this oxygen is distributed all over our body. So, this gaseous exchange that is taking place in the alveoli is super important. But in case of coronavirus infection, our lung gets severe inflammation. Now, this inflammation is a good thing for in terms of protection, our body would try to protect by alarming the immune system. But at the same time, few damaging incidents would also happen in our lungs. 
our airways would be clogged by thick mucus and it would be hard to breathe and it would be problem for gaseous exchange. Moreover, many dead cells, dead immune cells and fluid would be accumulated in the alveoli and this would be totally filled up with pus and it would hinder the process of gaseous exchange. When the virus enters and infects one lung cell, there are mechanisms inside our body which involves cytotoxic killer T cell to kill that viral infected cell. But the problem is once the cell is infected by the virus, nearby cells can also get infected by that particular virus because virus grows rapidly inside a host cell and makes its makes itself ready to prepare other cells in the vicinity. But the cell which is infected is pretty intelligent. Every human being would produce something called interferon. Interferon are alarming signal which tell the nearby cell that something is wrong in this cell. Now this particular cell has no option to leave. It would die but it would send an alarm to its neighbor. Its neighboring cell would undergo specific signal trans transduction pathway which ultimately produce antiviral molecule which would interfere with viral reproduction process or viral assembly processes and thereby this particular cell which is present in the near vicinity with the help of interferon can get immune or get protection against this virus infection. So don't think your body is just like a sitting duck. Your body is trying to fight back against these viruses and many of the cases the body wins and that is why 100% of the cases you don't see a mortality. The mortality is only 4% yet so your body is fighting back. But you might also ask that if body is fighting back then why there are even 4% dead? Now it depends upon the viral titer. You don't know how you are getting the infection or what type of aerosol you have bred. Now this aerosol might have a huge load of virus or might have a low load of virus. So the viral titer inside your lung is very important. If the viral titer is so high, our body's immune system would fail to protect it. And then comes the danger. But in case of low titer, our body can really fight back against this virus and there is a chance for recovery. So the best thing that we can do is take rest keep ourselves in isolation such that we don't spread this inf infection and while we are infected and our immune system is trying to fight in this sensitive period we should not get exposed to other pathogens it would create the situation even more complicated now chinese government has really made a lot of effort to create these isolation chambers inside the hospital which would prevent the spread of these viruses and especially the Chinese medical team has done incredible job to prevent the virus spread. If you like this video, please, please share this video among your friends and people you know in order to grow awareness. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.